She stated in her video that her stalkers and haters wanted so badly to get at her, but couldn't access her, so they went for her fans. No. Hi. You guys can see that I am not in front of my usual setup, so you can probably guess that this is going to be a serious video, and, and spoiler alert, it is. I told myself, and maybe you guys, that after my involvement with Gabby Hanna over the summer, after I put out my video telling my side of the story, that I would kind of keep my personal involvement with her separate from my main channel videos. As I run a commentary channel, I want to be as diplomatic and unbiased as possible. You might hear city noises. Last night, I recorded a video responding to or reacting to Alex James's video responding to Gabby Hanna. And in that video, I do think that I was very fair to Gabby Hanna. So that's coming, but I don't know if that will come out before this video or if this one will come out before that one. So to anyone who is commenting that I am obsessed with Gabby Hanna, for one, that video I recorded about Alex James and Gabby Hanna plus these situations is way too much Gabby Hanna for me for one week. I want to be done with this. I want to be done with her fans. She and I don't interact. It's her fans. That's what this is about. I would love to be able to get back to my regular commentary videos where I talk about, I would like to have the mental capacity to actually catch up with what's going on in the YouTube world so that I can make videos about people other than Gabby Hanna. But I need this matter to come to a stop. This video is it's personal, it is dealing with matters that are criminal, and it is a call to action to Gabby Hanna and to her fans. And on that note, I should warn you that I am going to be talking about certain matters that involve things like sexual assault, self-harm, mental health, just upsetting topics in general. And in fact, this video is not so much about Gabby Hanna as it is about her fans, but I do believe that she has the potential to change the course of what's happening right now within her fandom and how they interact with other people, particularly how they interact with people who've been critical of Gabby herself. And today it got to the point where I decided I am just fed up. I'm done. And so I'll get to what happened today, but I do think that it's worth kind of giving you a timeline of basically the cyber crimes that Gabby Hanna's fans have committed against me, my friends, and my followers. I do want to note that Gabby Hanna is not responsible for the behavior of her fans, particularly adults. And... By the way, everybody that I'm going to talk about, as far as I know, is an adult. As much as she likes to tell us when it benefits her and them, that her fans are minors, that these people are treating children this way, that way, and the other way, we are, in fact, dealing with adults in most of these situations. And in every situation that I'm talking about anyway, we are dealing with people who are old enough to be held responsible for the crimes that they are committing. So while she is not responsible for what they do, I'm not sure that everybody knows or has caught on yet to the fact that Gabby Hanna does not overtly tell her fans, go out and do this thing that is illegal, that is destructive, that could potentially get you in trouble and do it to defend me. She's never going to say that. She doesn't say that. She is very careful with her wording. Gabby Hanna is somebody who is decently versed, at least, in what her potential consequences might be based on the things that she says that can be documented in receipts and all that. We know she's queen of receipts and all that. She's she's aware of of what could happen to her based on her behavior. However, she will use language like, go defend me however you see fit. Or, hey, go to her Twitter and comment on her tweet and just say that I'm just talking about facts or something like that. She does launch her fleet of loyal fans. And 
simply based on the fact that she knows what kind of behavior they engage in and still continues to signal her fans like that. It's not like it happened one time, right? This is happening over and over again. And because of that, that is only confirmation to me that Gabby Hanna is aware of what she's doing when she sends her fans out. We saw this with the hate mob sent on me back in June. We've seen this on happen in other situations with hate mobs sent to other people. And the thing is, I'm about to talk about a group of people that have really caused a lot of damage. But I have said this before, and I'm going to say it again. They are victims of Gabby Hanna in the sense that she knows they will likely do things in defense of her that could get them in trouble, in really big trouble. And yet she continues to do the things that incite that behavior. So, and that is why I fully believe that Gabby Hanna truly does not care about her fans. If she is okay with them reaping the consequences that they have so far, that they might experience here soon, full well knowing <laughs> that if she did those things herself that she would get in trouble. She knows that they could get in trouble. That's what I'm saying. She knows that they can get in trouble and yet she sends them out. And why would you put somebody you love, knowingly put somebody you love in a precarious situation to do your dirty work and just wash your hands clean of the situation? Encourage it, in fact. Not even washing your hands clean, just encouraging it behind the scenes. That's what's happening. And that is why this is a call to action for Gabby. So of course, like I said, something happened today that was kind of just my breaking point with these people, but it is important, I think, to go back and give kind of a timeline of really all of the things that this group of people has done to, like I said, to kind of me, my friends, blah, 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 so that you can understand how I got to this point. Mind you, what I'm about to share is just what I could come up with off the top of my head as I was writing notes 30 minutes ago. So I'm probably missing some things, but I think this is plenty to illustrate my point. So back in June of this year, after the war that Gabby Hanna declared on me before disappearing from the internet, my friends and followers and I were caught up in kind of the series of Twitter wars that I would kind of come to and go from depending on whether or not I felt I needed to take control of a situation. I ignored situations if I could, if I felt it was best. I grappled at times with should I stand up for myself in the situation or just let it go, which by the way, is a very difficult thing when people are defaming your name. It is really hard not to do something about that. So if you're fighting that fight right now, I commend you and no judgment if you stand up for yourself, as long as you're not committing crimes. But when it came to matters like harassment, something to keep in mind is that I was very, very clear all along the way with my followers that essentially they had better not bully anyone or commit any crimes, be nasty or mean or anything like that in defense of me. I said that it is it is not a good look for anyone. It makes me look bad. It is gross. It is inappropriate. Simply don't do it. And as far as I know, none of my followers have committed any cyber crimes against these people. If something has happened that is brought to my attention that I need to address, I will. But my point is that I spoke up and I made it very clear to my followers what kind of behavior I do not condone. I think Oliver's concerned. He hears mommy upset. We're going to be okay, bud. So there was a situation with one of Gabby Hanna's... It, they're the stands. We, we call them the stands because it's not every single Gabby Hanna fan that I'm talking about. We are talking about a specific subset of people who exist on Twitter. And nine times out of ten, they are using... Gabby Hanna's name, my real fucking name, face, all of that in the name of this guerrilla style Twitter battling. I don't know what like. And one of the members of this group was actually doxxed very atrociously around the time that all these Twitter wars were happening. And 
understandably so, he and his friends, the Stans, did wonder if potentially that person doxing him, the person went by Anon, uh, wondered if Anon was me. I remember at that time talking in many group chats and among all of my friends to see if we knew who that person was and nobody that I could connect with knew who that person was or told me that they knew who that person was. But I did understand why this young man would believe that I would be involved. It made perfect sense. However, that is not how I roll. And so I did speak out against this behavior very publicly, and I spoke to this young man in DMs. I expressed to him that this person, Anon, was not me, that it's not anybody that I know, that I'm sorry that he's dealing with this, it's not okay, it's fucked up, and if you don't believe me, I understand. That's all to say that I did witness a crime committed against a member of this group of people. But in terms of what I saw between my followers and Gabby Hanna's fans, it was mostly in the realm of bickering and shit talking. And for what it's worth, if they want to talk about me in their circles, fine. Um, they have the right to shit talk me. I mean, there is, there does come a point where your shit talking do, can become harassment. Calling me an ugly bitch online is not a good look. <laughs> if it is, not classified under criminal harassment. It definitely says a lot about you, the person who said it. And I'll be talking about that person later. I think I'll be referring to her as D. But my point is, yeah, that behavior is ugly. It's gross. Um, but for the most part, just talking about why you don't like me, obsessing over me, however weird that is, I'm not going to sit down and make a video about that. And for what it's worth, I kind of continually have to ask my followers not to send me screenshots of this stuff and not to really spend time in their spaces because although Twitter is a public place and even if your profile is private, you know, I still do think that people should be able to congregate in their kind of corners of the internet and talk about what they want to talk about. You have to be able to stand by whatever you say. And if you say something that gets you in trouble, you're responsible for that. But I don't go seeking out what these people have to say about me because they don't like me. They don't like me. And so they have a lot of negative things to say about me. And guess what? I am a human being with feelings and opinions. Surprise. So in my spaces, sometimes I talk about what I don't like about this group of people. This is how human beings operate. That is not what I am trying to highlight in this video. And I want to make that very clear because that will come up later in terms of what kind of brought us to today. Um, but going back to Gabby Hanna's return to the internet, it was what, six weeks after she left. So that must have been about mid-August or so. She made a return to the internet. She made a video and I've said several times that I don't necessarily think that Gabby believes she's lying in these situations, though what she's saying oftentimes is untrue. I believe that she believes these things. But one of the things... I don't know if y'all heard that. Or that. But one thing she said in her video that I really took issue with and didn't talk about on my channel because I was trying to avoid that uh, was a clip where she talked about one of her fans. Well, first she was talking about her stalkers and her haters, right? So given that she is referencing a situation that involved my followers, I am assuming that my followers are lumped into this group of stalkers and haters. She stated in her video that her stalkers and haters wanted so badly to get at her, but couldn't access her, so they went for her fans. No, first of all, no. This wasn't in my notes, but I want to stop you there. I should have stopped you back in August or whenever you made that video, but I want to stop you there because your fans are seeking out people. Your fans are instigating these situations with people. You very well could have nothing to do with the situation except for the fact that they believe they're defending you against people who 
either don't like you or have something negative to say about you. If your fans, Gabby Hanna, did not go out and seek people like me and Jen Dent and Dustin Daly and Rachel Oates and Nick Snyder and everybody that you have drama with, I simply don't think that that drama with the, with the fans would happen. So that said, Gabby did say that her haters and stalkers, because they couldn't access her, went to her fans and drove one of her fans to relapse into self-harm and then essentially drove her to rehab. And I want to give you guys context for what happened exactly in that situation as well as I know. So I'm going to call that fan A. I'm just going to letter these fans. I don't care to get creative. It should be noted that as soon as I kind of became entrenched in all of this drama and these wars and, and this community, I found that there had been an ongoing war between the stands and Jen Dent. There was already stuff going on and I it looked like it had been going on for probably years. All I know is that she has said several times that she's at this point where I am fed up with them, doesn't care to be nice to them, is very cutting in her responses to them. She owns that. I have not witnessed Jen Dent committing any crimes. However, when I entered the scene, these stands were contacting Jen's previous employer. This was over the summer. Jen Dent was in the process of a move selling her house, looking for an employment as a nurse during a global pandemic. Talk about stress. These stands, as far as I know, did contact her previous employer. What they said to, to them, I don't know. But they also talked about contacting Jen's licensing board to try to get her license revoked. Again, I don't know if that panned out. I don't know. I mean, obviously, they didn't take her license. Jen's got a job. Congrats on that too, by the way. I don't know if they if they followed through with that attempt, but it was something they were talking about doing. They continued to talk about these very nefarious plans that are potentially illegal and for sure in bad form. So while everything was starting to involve me, it was very apparent to me that these stands were on a mission to destroy Jen Dent. I'm not saying that's what they would call it. That's what it looked like to me. And this behavior started to escalate and it got to the point where a certain someone, as far as we know, uh, a man in Australia who seems to be a very disturbed person. And so I, I'm worried even mentioning him, but this part of the story is integral to the story. Um, so this person started a rumor, a false sexual assault allegation against Jen Dent. And he took it a few steps further by saying that not only did Jen Dent assault someone, she assaulted a little girl that was also his friend. As far as I know, this man is about my age. He is in his early 30s, I believe. So already, sir, you have no business being friends with little girls. But this was something that was just, I would say, demonstrably untrue. But there are certain things that you really can't demonstrate are true or untrue. It is just, in my opinion, a ludicrous accusation. It is baseless. I can say that. It is baseless. There is nobody that's come forward to confirm these allegations. As far as I know, they are false allegations. And that is a really, really, really fucked up thing to do to a person in any situation. Mind you, going back to the fact that Jen was a nurse searching for employment in a global pandemic, in the middle of a move, in the middle of a house sale. Like, fuck off with that behavior, my God. How does this relate to fan A and that that relapse? This man that, quite frankly, I don't think has any business kind of interacting with a lot of this community if they are minors. Again, we don't know. Minors, adults, which are they? But this fan A, who, as far as I know, is kind of a favorite of Gabby's, uh, a bit of a sweetheart among the community. Um, that's as much as I know about her. That person retweeted, and I may be paraphrasing here, but I also might remember this well enough that this might be verbatim. But she retweeted that allegation saying, 
If she, Jen Dent, if she can throw around accusations, so can we. Plus, if this is true, it needs to spread like wildfire. Let's take a look at this for a second. This person, Fan A, went into this interaction saying that she was essentially throwing around accusations. That's what she was going to do. That's what they had every right to do. Which, by the way, that and that's the fan that might be uh, technically under 18, just so you know. Um, it's not a safe thing just to throw around accusations. It doesn't matter if you believe somebody is doing it to you. Don't do it. And she got called out for this. She got called out for saying that she was throwing around accusations. And what I found to be the most problematic, and I, I, I believe that it was actually Amberin that pointed this out, it was a plus to this person that it be true. She said plus if it's true. If it's true should be at the forefront of all of this. So that's, that's bad. It's a bad situation. Um, it was around this time that I think a few of us were starting to take legal action. I want to be kind of vague here because I don't know if any of this stuff is still ongoing, uh, but people had been filing certain reports with certain entities looking into their rights and legal actions that they could take. And when I say people, I, I really mean that, like, you can probably guess that I did. You could probably guess that Jen did. You can probably guess that Amber did. But, like, there are, there were a lot of people involved. And at that time, someone, I, again, I don't know who did this. And I have not gotten an answer from anybody that I know who knows who did this, though I don't necessarily think that they what they did was wrong. But somebody did at this time, reach out to that fan's family member. I don't know, I think it might have been a sister um, reached out via social media to say, hey, this is what your family member is doing. I think somebody should know. So would I have done that? Probably not. But considering what could have happened as a consequence to that fan, had Jen Dent exercised her legal rights to the greatest extent, I would say that it, as a young person or any person whatsoever, I would rather my family find out that I was behaving badly than to reap the consequences that could have potentially been. And kind of as a side note, and I don't mean to be too insensitive here, but what kind of world are we living in where we have to protect teenagers from the consequences of their bad behavior? That instead of telling on someone, we have to make sure that we're not triggering them by upsetting them, by making it known that they are committing crimes. Like, I, I don't get it. I hope that wasn't too obtuse for anyone. I'm just saying that this girl's behavior was very bad. Somebody brought it to the attention of her family. I don't necessarily think that that is, but it's definitely not a crime. I'll say that much. While we were all kind of as a team working through kind of debunking this false allegation and talking about what can be done about it, I asked this fan fan, A, can you vouch for this person that you retweeted? You, you retweeted this false sexual assault allegation can you stand by the person who originally tweeted it? And she kind of like roundabout said, hey, I wasn't the one who said it, blah, blah, blah. And I asked her, I said, no, it is important, paraphrasing again, because keeping in mind, people were filing reports on a lot of these situations. I, I asked up front, I, I, well, I said, I don't think you're necessary. I don't think you're going to get into any trouble, but I want to ask, would you vouch for the person that you origin that you retweeted in this in this situation and she said no so she kind of retracted that and after my saying I don't think that you'll get in trouble somebody did enter the conversation and say well actually she can get in trouble for perpetuating and spreading a false allegation and I believe that is what triggered and and spooked this fan I think she apologized for retweeting but the point is that if that is the situation that drove fan A to relapse into self-harm and to have to seek inpatient treatment, I don't want to be too harsh about how I say this, but I want to be fair. If you end up relapsing because you 
experience consequences for your own wrongdoing, that is not anyone else's fault that you relapsed. And I'm sorry, and that's a really difficult reality to face. I didn't harp on this much, but the day that Gabby Hanna sent a hate mob on me, I was hanging on to a thread in terms of my sobriety. I was seven and a half years sober. And the only thing, or that I can remember, the only thing that really kept me from relapsing in that moment because of the panic and anxiety, which by the way, was not a rest- was not a consequence of my own doing. So let's keep that in mind. So there is a huge difference between these situations. But I remember that this situation, Gabby sending her fans on me, pushed me to the brink of relapse. And the only thing that stopped me was my brother's death. That if I were to relapse, then that puts forth a message to myself that Gabby Hanna is more important than my brother in some way, or, you know, that the situation is bigger than my brother's death. And so I didn't. I pulled out all my resources and I did what I could to stay sober. And that is in no way shaming this person for not pulling out the resources to stop herself from relapse. This is, these things are a journey and they're different for everyone. And relapse is often part of of recovery. So I genuinely hope to that fan, I genuinely hope that you have found recovery again, that you are getting proper treatment, that you are able to peacefully handle situations again. But I cannot agree that it is somebody else's fault that you relapsed if it was your consequences that pushed you to that point. I think I've made my point about that. Again, I hope you're well. I do wish you the best, but that the situation, our sobriety in whatever it is, for me, it's alcohol. For you, it may be self-harm or it might have been eating disorder. It was something. I mean, the the structure of, of these compulsive disorders, they're very similar. And and those are, in a sense, in, in a technical sense, that is separate from what we do publicly that may or may not be illegal. You don't get a pass because you might relapse. I can't go out, commit crimes, and then be like, officer, I'm an alcoholic. If you arrest me, I might drink. Like, it doesn't work like that. So uh, if that can just be like a little life lesson from somebody twice your age, then you're welcome. What else happened to to Jen Dent? I mean, she can tell you what all has happened. This is telling her story is not is not my task to do, but chronicling the cyber crimes that I witnessed is something I'm highlighting here. So another fan, and we'll call this fan Fan B. That fan and Jen Dent have had the most fiery relationship, if that's what we want to call it, in terms of what I've noticed between stands and non-stands or anti-stands, whatever you want to call them. Um, this person really, really has it out with uh, with and for Jen Dent. They sent a cease and desist letter to Jen Dent. I don't know if it was by snail mail or by email, but uh, they sent... Jen Dent, a cease and desist letter requesting Jen's signature. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for laughing. It is, this is just that ridiculous to me. Jen was not going to sign the cease and desist letter. She had no intention of doing so. And in fact, in true Jen Dent fashion, I believe she sent back a a letter that simply said, fuck off signed Jen Dent. And this fan cut and pasted Jen Dent's signature onto their cease and desist letter. And guess what? To this day, as far as I understand, that person still does not see that that is a crime. In fact, I'm going to talk more about these crimes that are happening where these these stands just don't grasp that they are crimes. That is what this video is all about, is that people are breaking the law and they're not stopping and nobody's stopping them. And along the same vein, 
To this day, those same stands have been continually laughing at and mocking the topic of doxing because that ha was something that came up when I was very much involved with these interactions and when my friend Ambrin was very much involved. They either seem to not grasp, even though they have been given the definition of doxing, I don't know how many times, and they've doxed people, I don't know how many times. Given the definition, people have, have found the definition and posted it for them and said, look, this is the part, this is the act that you're committing that falls under this category of doxing, which is illegal. They've continued to minimize doxing in general or the doxing that they've done and laughed it off about, you know, we're just Googling people. This stuff is Googleable. Well, guess what? Googleable information can be doxing. I'm done defining that for you. There was one fan who found my Facebook profile, my personal profile, and posted information that she found on it on Twitter publicly for all of her friends to see. I was not happy about this. She did apologize to me and she did take it down. Doesn't mean I need to be okay with it, but I don't think that I made that big of a deal about it. What was more upsetting is how many times Ambrin was doxxed by, I want to say, at least three of these stands. But there is one that I want to highlight, and we're going to have to call her Fan D, that is at the heart of every single issue that comes up from here on out. I remember these stands did kind of dredge up some of Amberin's old, like, modeling profiles to find more information about her name and then using that information to look her up here and there. Like, it's all stuff that anybody can do. But at the point that you release that information that is identifying that could potentially lead people to Amberin and invade her safety, that is doxing. And I just realized I just defined it again. And, and I don't mean to insult the intelligence of my viewers. I'm sure you guys understand this has just been a point of contention, a pain point for some time. And it's been maddening. It's crazy making to hear so many people just not get it. But this fan, Fan D, specifically, this person specifically posted something about a restaurant in Ambrin's town and said that that was a restaurant in Am Ambrin's town, gave the address for it, and said that she, Ambrin, would be easy to find. Based on this information, she would be easy to find. First of all, that language is kind of menacing, so I take issue with that. But even if it didn't sound so sinister, she would be easy to find. For what? For what purpose? What? Why? It, I'm not trying to find her. Why? Why would any of you be looking to find her? It's doxing. <laughs> That's doxing, my friend. You're not my friend. That was total sarcasm. But I remember at that time, because, of course, I was speaking to Amber daily. I was FaceTiming with her daily and seeing how wrought with anxiety my friend was that I spent so much of my time trying to not only help her kind of get through that situation, but also fight on her behalf too, because it's not right. When you see your friend like that, it's heartbreaking to see somebody experiencing daily panic because she was at the risk of many people who didn't like her finding not just the town that she lived in, but with this Googling information that all these stands are putting up. This is how you Google for Amber and this is how you find her information. It's so easy. Uh, one person did like actually a screen record of how she Google searched Amber and this information actually brought up things so personal as her phone number and address. And so I remember at that time, Ambrin working so hard, scrambling to get this information taken off the internet because she was so afraid of who might find her. And again, this is not panic due to consequences of your own actions. And when I say consequences, I mean rightful legal consequences. Yeah, she pissed somebody off and so she did that. That's not a consequence. She did not deserve for that to happen. She did not deserve the panic attacks that she had 
day in and day out, feeling as though these stands were not only invading her spaces online, but now invading her personal space, her home, physically. I'm not saying that they invaded her home, but I'm saying that sense of, of safety that one has in their home. And, and that's actually kind of eventually what I'm getting to as it, as it applies to me. But it just, it very much concerns me that to this day, I still see these stands saying over and over again, and particularly this stand, stand D, we can remember stand D for doxing, that's easy saying, oh, she says I doxed her because I posted the address of a restaurant in her town. You're continually minimizing your crime, your cyber crime. It doesn't matter if you don't think that it's all that bad. The law says it's that bad. And in fact, you, fan D, fan dox, I filed an IC3.gov report on you and posted that report online. And what did I do? I blocked out your location. You know why? Because I was not about to commit that same crime, even though where you live is Googleable. I mean, how do you think I found it? My goodness. So this fan, Fan D, Fan Docs, has continued to harass people online. As far as I know, is supposed to be perma banned from Twitter, but has created account after account after account because they would get banned. Twitter would catch on to it, ban that one, ban that one. Create should create a new one. And it would be banned. And so, and this, this community of stands is trying so hard to protect her. They, they give her, they give her code names. They speak in code to say, Hey, go follow this person and, uh, and kind of like give clues as to who it is. She says the reason that she was banned is because she called an animal abuser a piece of shit, <laughs> which I find hard to believe that that would constitute a perma ban. But whether or not it does, if they consider that harassment, I'm not going to argue with them. And it doesn't matter. You're violating the terms of service. You're violating community guidelines and evading bans. But I, I, in my heart of hearts, believe that it has to be continual harassment on a much greater scale to be permabanned or at least like a uh, long-term suspension or something like that. She was not allowed to continue creating these sock accounts or whatever you want to call these accounts. However, this person who says that Amberin would be easy to find, this person who is breaking laws and bypassing rules placed on, on these, these platforms that she exists on and continually harassing people and calling me things like an ugly bitch... She has privated her account, but sends, gives information for her friends to put public or gives information for her friends to send to me. So at that point, just letting you know, like, even though your account technically is private, you are not behaving in a private space. So I'm getting these messages. I'm continually getting these messages. And after some lies started popping up, which I may talk about in a bit. Uh, I decided that I wanted to take action and I tried to speak with her first. I reached out to her. I said, hey, I'd like to speak with you. She said that she does not feel comfortable speaking with me without a mediator because she feels unsafe. And her friends were telling me she feels unsafe talking to me. Tell me, what, what have I ever done to make anybody feel like they are in danger? I may have been a snarky bitch at you a couple of times, but doing anything that might make you feel like you're in danger, I have never displayed that kind of behavior. And in fact, going back to what I said earlier in my video, I condemn that behavior. And also, why would I make myself out to be such a hypocrite to tell you over and over again, these things are illegal, don't do them, and do them myself. So no, fan D, you are not unsafe in my presence. Um, but how you feel is how you feel. That's fine. I don't need to talk to you directly, at least not right now. But I'd like to highlight that still, at this point, I have not committed any crimes against any of these people. I have not broken any laws. To my knowledge and to the knowledge of anybody I've spoken to, I have not committed any crimes in any of these situations. So catching up to the past week or so, which was a series of events that led to where we are, I believe. Last week, I 
talked about my feelings about the Gabby Hanna stands in a Twitch stream. I don't remember exactly how the conversation came up, but I later found that a number of Gabby stands did come to my Twitch stream, which they're well within their rights to do. But they came with the intention of recording my stream, which Fan Docs says is allowed. I will have to look into Twitch's terms of service to see if that is actually allowed, but I'm not complaining about that. I think it's scummy, but you're capturing what something that I said in a public space. And so it's on me to stand by whatever I said. And while I did not say the nicest things about these people that I don't like, um, I didn't say anything that I think crossed any boundaries. And that really kind of um, is a point of disagreement. I later found out that, that these stands were in my stream. I didn't no, at the time, I did notice a couple of usernames popping up that I didn't recognize. And I was just like, hey, welcome, new person to my stream. Thanks for coming here. But uh, people were probing me. And I don't remember who asked what. But I just remember being probed for what I think about these stands while they're in the stream, recording my stream, right? I spoke about Fan D. Fan D. Docs. I was in my stream being asked these questions, but also kind of talking to my friend Ashley and venting about these situations. I commented on a conversation that the stands have made very public about this person's home life and the information that they were putting forward, putting public about this fan's home life is of the highest, the most highly concerning nature. And I have not been able to wrap my head around how these stands, especially considering most of them that I'm talking to and about are adults, how they're able to harbor this information and this inform and it's not in private conversations for this information to be so public and nobody's doing anything about it. We're talking about a situation where a person is in danger and seemingly nothing is being done about it. So I commented on that. I, I said, I don't remember the verbiage I used exactly, but I know that I've said this before, that it is very odd. It's very concerning to me. And it is. It is. That is not making a mockery of your situation. If I were to say, aha, you know, you're pretending to be in this situation, I would consider that a mockery. If I said, oh, you deserve whatever that would be making a mockery of your situation. To say that I find it odd, concerning, strange, or whatever, that you continually talk about this thing and your friends know and you're talking about it and nothing is being done, that's not making a mockery. In fact, I've had uh, to grapple with this moral dilemma of, do I reach out to law enforcement in this person's area to try and see if something can be done. I've had to deal with that moral dilemma. I don't know if any of the stands have, perhaps they have, um, but somebody who is making a mockery of your situation typically is not going to be the person who's trying to decide how they may be able to help and what their moral responsibility is in that situation. Um, and that is th that legitimately, that is a situation that I discussed in a group of friends where we were split on, on what to do moving forward. And I will be honest, created friction between me and my friends because people in my camp have their opinions on how to handle such a sensitive situation. So despite the fact that you as a person, I don't like, my friends and followers don't seem to like, your home life is and always was a serious matter to us. I just found it odd and concerning that it was just so casually talked about publicly. And if all of this that I just said about my Twitch stream seems like whatever, it seems just like gossip, it seems just like shit talking or just whatever, you're right, because that is all it was. But it was this situation where these defamatory lies were born. Hello Leash mocks people who are survivors of a sort. 
And there was another, oh, oh, and also saying that I was the reason that I was the person who pressured Gabby Hanna to talk about her sexual assault. No, I was not. I don't even know what that was about. All I know is that Gabby Hanna threw that in my face as a reason that she didn't respond to a text that warranted a response. I had nothing to do with why she talked about that. And so, yeah, I, this is where it started to really piss me off is to see that this person is stating blatant lies that are defaming me and my reputation. I'm pissed. I'm going to start like seeing what I can do about that. So keep in mind, this person already has a case a file opened in their local jurisdiction and I called and I, I talked about, you know, essentially my rights or, you know, what, what the implications are of this and what can be reported and what can be done. And from there, I kind of felt like, okay, perhaps this is enough for me to be done with the stance, at least for now. I would love a break. And I, I, you know, recorded a video, a commentary video last night. I decided to like go back and enjoy my life. And it was this morning that I got a text message from Jen Dent saying that she was livid over Fan C, cease and desist, because Fan C had signed Jen Dent up for at least 10 mass mailing email lists. And how Jen Dent knew that it was Fan C or... I would say beyond a reasonable doubt or how Jen Dent was almost certain that it's that person is because these emails that were being kicked to her contained the IP address of the person who initiated that subscription. And that IP address pinged to the very city that this fan lives in. So I would say if there's any other possibility, please share it in the comments. But that fan has kind of either advertently or inadvertently confirmed this on Twitter, but that's kind of neither here nor there. The point is that that happened and that got me thinking. I saw a couple of suspicious emails this morning and then I thought, would they, would they really do that to me too? Do they really care about me that much? And I checked my inbox and I had... I, I haven't counted them yet. I don't know how many there were. Um, I'm putting a screenshot up here that shows you that scrolling pretty fast through my mail app, it took 18 seconds for me to get from the first sign up email to the last. And notice that this started at 1 a.m. and ended at 11 a.m. This person or people were at this for 10 hours hours throughout the morning. And that's so sick to me. And guess what? You may not believe this, but that too is a crime. It is breaking the law. It is considered criminal harassment to sign up people for spam mail. And then to have done this so many times, like I, I'll probably have a number at this point of how many times it was done with malicious intent and not to mention to my personal email. So that's not something that I've listed publicly. It's not on my website. It's not on my Instagram, my Twitter, any anywhere on Facebook either. Um, so I am led to believe that they probably searched far and wide to get my personal email address. And for what it's worth, Several of those emails had the same uh, IP address as the emails that Jen Dent received. So those were, those are assumed to be the same person. But then I had another handful of the sign up emails that were the IP address was hidden behind a VPN, but the location is somewhere in Canada. So some people believe the, the second person to be Fan D Docs, who resides in that general area, some of the stands have told me that she's already uh, afraid for the consequences that may be coming for these other reports, so it's not her. I still have work ahead of me to figure out who did this. 
in conjunction with this other person who we pretty much know for certain did it. So fun update time. I found out from a couple of people within the fandom who I guess were not happy about this situation that the people responsible for these emails were in fact fans C and D. And we know this because they were bragging about it in a group chat. So fans C and D. D who feels unsafe with me. D who doxed Amberin a number of times. D who's paraded herself around the internet internet as a bad bitch harassing people and getting banned on Twitter but then the moment she gets called out on something cowers and says she feels unsafe she was smart enough to use a VPN to commit her crimes but dumb enough to brag about it in a group chat good going Janessa but this is the first time since the hate mob that I have legitimately had this sinking feeling of violation if it's incredibly intrusive on my life yeah, sure, you can Google this information. They probably found my email address by technically legal means, but it's violating. And to use my email address, you're posing as me to sign up for these mailing lists is criminal. So at this point, now at this point where I feel my personal life does is not, some things should be sacred. Things like being in your home, personal email address. Like there are certain things that are private that are that ha- you are allowed to have as sacred and these people violated that and that is why I am done. I am done. So to anyone who might ask why am I doing this instead of filing reports with ic3.gov with the local law enforcement in these people's area, calling their internet service providers or VPN provider to provide them this information and let them know that uh, they are breaching the contracts with these companies. And by the way, that account behind a VPN, I don't know exactly what this means, but it is flagged 99% abusive. So that doesn't bode well for that person or why I'm not reviewing other legal options. I am doing all of those things. The reason I've made this video is because I've been doing those things. Other people have been doing those things and it's not getting through. And quite frankly, I should not have to put this much footwork into just trying to get people to stop breaking laws that invade my life and my privacy. And, and just taking a step back and realizing this all started because Gabby Hanna went on an hour and a half live stream in which she signaled to her fans to approach me. She did give them uh, liberty. She gave her blessing to defend her in any way that they saw fit. Um, and she did direct them to comment on my tweets. So this is all this all stems from that. And the part that, or there are so many parts that are frustrating and maddening, but Gabby Hanna has said and done nothing to address any of this behavior, except to absolve fan A because we pushed her to relapse and rehab. So there, everything flies. Everything in the in the world of Gabby Hanna. If you are a fan of hers, and if you do something that is meant to serve Gabby Hanna's defense, then anything flies. This is an encouragement of illegal behavior. She has not discouraged this behavior. She's not condemned this behavior. She's encouraging it in a number of ways, and they're doing this all in her name. Like these people, somebody could end up locked up. And it's all in the name of Gabby Hanna. It's all to defend Gabby Hanna with accounts that use her photo and her name, her fucking name that is so sacred to her is being used to commit crimes. And all we've ever asked of Gabby Hanna is to please make a public statement to your fans that you do not condone bullying, harassment, and cyber crimes. We've begged, I know that Megan Ranks has begged Gabby, please send this message to your fans. Why won't you just send this message to your fans? So this message is for Gabby Hanna, whether or not it reaches her, but it certainly is going to reach her fans. And that's 
something. Again, when I say fans, I'm really talking about these stands on Twitter. But to Gabby, your reputation is already plummeting. Your fans acting on your behalf are only making your reputation that much worse. You have some level of control over that and you need to exercise that control. So speak up, condemn this behavior, address your fans, do something, Gabby Hanna. Please. It's all we've asked. Thanks. (laughs) 